Almighty God. Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 80. The response is, Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your conscience, and we shall be saved. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength, and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your conscience, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbours, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life, that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. My brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you, because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him, you are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days, after that suffering, 
the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all. Keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Perhaps especially as we come towards the season of Advent and towards Christmas and in other faiths, Diwali, we have a theme of light. Jesus is the light of the world, coming into the world. Light, as opposed to darkness, creates a powerful spiritual imagery. It is rich and potent. In ours and many spiritual traditions, we light candles in church. Our churches on a day like this are adorned with the natural light streaming through the windows, creating beauty, falling as they do on flowers and the interior church walls. Light is a comforting thing, bringing calm and peace when morning breaks after a restless night. Light is also a powerful thing. The sun, if we are exposed to it too much, can be destructive. And Jesus commented in our Gospel reading today, talking about the end times, the powers in the heavens will be shaken. They will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. The Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Every eye will see him. How can that be? Well, if the sun itself is a symbol of divine power, perhaps the second coming of Jesus could be something like a solar flare reaching out towards earth that could be very destructive, will bring a sense of judgment, will bring everyone to their knees, could even create and facilitate a new heaven and a new earth as it says in the scriptures the end of all things the end of civilization as we know it that is 
perhaps a scary thought. The light is comforting, but it is also all-powerful like God himself. But, writes Paul in his epistle this morning, he will strengthen you till the end. Have no fear. God is with you. His spirit is with you and will never depart. He will be everything that you need right to the very end of your journey, to the end times, even in a moment of judgment, God will be there for you. He will strengthen you and he will be your strength. I'm reminded of a line, a rather beautiful poetic note at the end of the funeral service, the commendation when unusually a reverent is not praying to God, is not speaking to the congregation, but is addressing the soul of the departed. Go forth, O soul, upon your journey from this world and into the next. In the love of God the Father who created you, the power of Jesus Christ who redeems you, and, a bit like Paul's phrase, presence of the Holy Spirit who strengthens you. But I like to slightly reword that phrase instead of simply saying the Holy Spirit who strengthens you, O immortal soul. I like to give it a bit more emphasis. The Holy Spirit who gives you his own strength. There may come a point and I guess it is so when we reach the end of our life's journey, our mortality, when we have 100% run out of our own strength. And it is at that point we need the strength of the Spirit of God. The light is all-powerful. It will bring all things to judgment, separating the dark things from the light things. But have no fear. When you're at the end of your own strength, when you feel you are not good enough, you can give no more, you will find someone else is there to give you their strength, the Holy Spirit of God himself. Have no fear, you will have everything you need, and though the light may bring judgment, you will find yourself ultimately and forever saved by the light. This is the theme that undergirds our Advent and our Christmas season. As St. Andrew welcomes the light of Christ, may we welcome the light of Christ. Now, in this Advent season, and forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon each one of us, and all those whom we hold dear in our hearts, near and far now and forever. Amen.